Okay, we are here and we are looking at the Gettysburg Harrisburg Railroad Station. And this video series is going to be entitled The Gettysburg Harrisburg Railroad Round Top Spur. And this is going to be part one. Now, many people don't realize that a fully operational steam locomotive once time, once not only came into town in Gettysburg, but also even across the Gettysburg battlefield. And today, remnants of that track still can be seen at different spots on the battlefield. Through this video series, we're going to take a look as we travel on the Gettysburg-Harrisburg Railroad Round Top Spur. Now, the railroad station was dedicated in 1884, March the 4th, 1884 and it opened for business on April the 21st, 1884. Now at the age before and at the beginnings of the, of the automobile, the railroad was the main method of travel from city to city. Now here in Gettysburg, which lied just to the south of Harrisburg, it had become a hotbed of activity because of the Battle of Gettysburg and the nearing 25th anniversary of the Battle of Gettysburg, where vet Union veterans began to place markers and monuments on the Gettysburg battlefield to commemorate their deeds on July 1st, 2nd, and 3rd of 1863. From this railroad station, a spur would run down through the town, across the battlefield, and to Little Round Top. And today we're going to take a tour of the old Gettysburg Harrisburg Railroad Round Top Spur. Is the Gettysburg Harrisburg Rail Station, as I mentioned earlier. Also, the train station in the distance, which we know today as the Lincoln train station, was operated by the Western Maryland Railroad. That brought from the south, from Westminster and from Baltimore, and it hooked up with other lines. But this station actually came from the north from the town of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. At one time, very early, a golden spike, as in most railroads, was laid right here in this vicinity of the railroad. As we get closer to the building over here, I do want to mention in the distance you can see the cupola of the Lutheran Theological Seminary. Now the round top spur is what we're going to focus on today, and the round top spur left the station right here, and on our next video, part two, it's going to travel in this direction and then crisscross the Chambersburg Pike up here today near the current post office facility. This has been the Gettysburg Harrisburg Railroad Round Top Spur, part one, on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. Here on Chambersburg Street, where it crosses with Washington Street. And today it is the site of the 7-Eleven here in town. But in 1863, the Eagle Hotel sat on the site. And the Eagle Hotel was one of the most prominent hotels in the town of Gettysburg. It was actually occupied by Confederate troops on July 1st, 1863. And this is going to be part 1A of the Gettysburg-Harrisburg Railroad Round Top Spur. And I'm standing here because I want to mention that even though the park, or the early park rather, was against the Gettysburg-Harrisburg Railroad Round Top Spur, a licensed guide named W.A. Holtzworth actually operated a business out of the Eagle Hotel on the site of what is today 7-Eleven, where he would give guided tours of the Gettysburg battlefield on the... Gettysburg-Harrisburg Railroad Round Top Spur. Now, of course, on July 1st of 1863, this was ground zero for the Union retreat at Gettysburg as they collapsed from the west with the 1st Corps and then the north with the 11th Corps. And in the distance, just over here, you can actually see the cupola of Pennsylvania College with the Civil War flag. And then just under it over here, next to this White House, is the Gettysburg Harrisburg Railroad Station. And in our next part, part two, we're actually going to show how it would come into the town of Gettysburg, cross the Chambersburg Pike, and then out on to the sacred Gettysburg battlefield. This has been the Gettysburg Harrisburg Railroad Round Top Spur Part 1A on 
Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. And I do want to mention that the railroad that we talked about being opened in 1884 was removed in 1932. And the tracks laid in the ground for about 10 more years. And then during World War II, an iron and steel scrap drive was made and the tracks were finally removed in 1944, or 1942 rather, for that World War II scrap drive. This has been the Gettysburg Harrisburg Railroad Round Top Spur Part 1A on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. The Gettysburg Harrisburg Railroad Round Top Spur Part 2 on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook and I'm here on the Chambersburg Pike and I'm standing across the street from Tom Knox to use auto and right here in the parking lot of the Dunlap's Family Restaurant and it was here that the Round Top Spur line of the Gettysburg Harrisburg Railroad came coming from the train station would then enter in through the town of Gettysburg right by what today is this building cross the Chambersburg Pike right here by today what is Dunlop's restaurant and head in this direction in fact one of the buildings from the late 1800s but not from the Civil War is this building here that was actually used by the Gettysburg Harrisburg Railroad and today it's a uh, storage area for the Dunlop's restaurant but this was a storage unit for different equipment during the Gettysburg Harrisburg Railroad round top spur years this street over here is Reynolds Avenue the train would ride by this building and then bend to the left where it would go further into uh, deeper into rather the Gettysburg National Military Park area now one time there was only a road or two that ran here this development was later built in the early 1900s so again we're talking about 1884 and this area uh, is yet undeveloped the Lutheran Seminary complex uh, is straight ahead of us here in the distance as you go up toward Seminary Ridge and of course this was a hotbed of activity on July 1st 1863 because the first Corps collapsed right from the seminary area and the 11th Corps is collapsing from the college area which you can see uh, the again the, the cupola of the Pennsylvania College and some of the other modern college buildings as these 11th Corps troops are all converging right here uh, in the dab smack middle of the Union retreat of July 1st 1863 this has been the Gettysburg Harrisburg Railroad Round Top Spur Part 2 on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. Standing here at the corner of Reynolds Street and West Middle Street here in Gettysburg. And we talked about the in our last video the train then headed in this direction following the modern route of Reynolds Street, where it then began its journey in this direction here um, toward the Gettysburg Battlefield. Now this <coughs> is going to be the Gettysburg Harrisburg Railroad Round Top Spur Part 3 and one of the more interesting parts of the video because it is one of the only spots where remnants of not only the roadbed but the railroad ties themselves still are secretly hitting here uh, on the Gettysburg Battlefield. And we're standing here on Middle Street and for a reference point there is the building for Cordori Memorials. Now the train tracks, actually I'm walking on what was the bed of the train track and they crossed here toward the town and today I'm going to show you here behind these trees secretly hidden in the ground some of the original railroad ties, the only ones that are left here from the Gettysburg Harrisburg round round top spur line now these railroad ties there were two thousand one hundred and fifty one of these railroad ties um, on the battlefield or on the railroad round top spur and they were eight and a half feet long nine inches wide and seven feet thick and again, today a tree has grown up here right in the middle of the railroad track, but again you can see some more of these railroad ties here. This is where the train continued on its journey southbound into the areas that we would later know as Pickett's Charge, by the McMillan Farm and then out today where Colt Park is. Right here, um, it would actually 
cross this ford and then head toward what is today the St. Francis Catholic Cemetery. And we're going to pick it up in our next video over here. I do want to mention in recent years there has been uh, an idea to maybe even remove these last remaining railroad ties out of the ground to build a walking trail uh, through the town of Gettysburg which I personally think would be a great mistake. Um, if they were to go ahead with the plan of the walking trail, and if anyone hears, any local uh, people hear about this, I have a proposed idea I think that would be satisfactory to all. If this was ever to be made a walking trail, my idea would be to remove these railroad ties from the ground, okay, then place the trail in the ground, uh, a dirt trail and then cover that dirt trail a portion of that dirt trail with these ties again after they've been properly cleaned and preserved place them back in the ground on the walking trail and then cover it with either some kind of a clear rubber or uh, other you know plastic substance where they would then be preserved for future generations to see it would preserve the railroad ties uh, in the spot that they were the last remaining uh, memories of the Gettysburg Harrisburg Railroad round top spur and it would also allow the walking trail uh, to continue because of course this is wood and these railroad ties over time will eventually erode and uh, and disappear this has been the Gettysburg Harrisburg Railroad Round Top Spur Part 3 on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. Standing in St. Francis of Xavier Catholic Cemetery here in Gettysburg. In our last video, Door Dory Memorial, we talked about the Gettysburg Harrisburg Railroad Round Top Spur. And by the way, this is Part 4 of that video series. The train then crossed in this area and ran to the east side of the cemetery, straight ahead in this direction along this creek here. And from here it would, it would go forward uh, and it would run just to the west side of the David McMillan farm and orchard. Now the David McMillan farm uh, was used several times during the Battle of Gettysburg. It was it was crossed by the First Corps on July 1st, 1863, as they headed to Seminary Ridge. Um, and their overall federal commander, John F. Reynolds, as we've seen, had taken a different route through the town. But the Gettysburg-Harrisburg Railroad tracks are, no longer exist anywhere here in the cemetery, but they once ran right here where our camera is focused. And of course, today, uh, Colt Park area is in this direction over here. So the train ran by today, what is Colt Park? It ran by the historic David McMillan farm, and then it would go out, as we'll look at in a later video, to the area of the fields of Pickett's Charge, where the William Bliss farm once stood. This has been the Gettysburg-Harrisburg Railroad Round Top Spur, Part 4 on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. Harrisburg Railroad Round Top Spur Part 5 here on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. And I'm standing in front of Watson's Battery. They were in the Army of Northern Virginia, Yule's Corps. They were artillery reserve that were in Dance's Battalion. And this was Watson's Battery, which consisted of four 10-pound Parrot rifles. Today, here are two of the 10-pound parrot rifles, and the marker that depicts their other two is right here in the distance behind them. And by the way, as we continue on our witness trees, this is a witness tree. I call it the Watson's Battery Witness Tree. It is in poor condition. No one knows how much longer it will last, but it sits here to the left side of Watson's Battery Tablet. Uh, here along the stone fence. Now the Gettysburg Harrisburg Railroad round top spur uh, would then head from the cemetery in our last video right by in front of this battery into the Colt Park area then down passing by the David McMillan farm and then out to the fields where Pickett's Charge happened. That's right a live steam engine on the fields of Pickett's Charge. Many people may not have known that. However, there is a photograph
that was taken from about this angle here depicting this battery uh, in the late 1800s and I'm going to post that photograph here uh, because you'll see the cars from the train and they were actually right here where the wooded area uh, where the houses sit today um, in the in the low line area and that train again headed in that direction out toward the fields of Pickett's Charge and then its ultimate destination in the distance you can see the round tops out here. Again, Watson's battery, a little history about the battery. On July 2nd of 1863, they were positioned on the north side of the railroad cut. And they hammered the enemy, part of the hammering of the enemy, uh, on July 2nd uh, of 1863, uh, after they were arrived too late to participate on the 4th. And then, of course, they were moved into this position back here and up here on July 3rd of 1863 and they took part in the cannonade that preceded Longstreet's assault which we know as Pickett's Charge. During the Battle of Gettysburg they expended 661 rounds um, and their losses were never really reported so there isn't any kind of detailed reports of the losses of the men of Watson's battery. This has been the Gettysburg-Harrisburg Railroad Round Top Spur, Part 5, on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook.